Good afternoon. Good morning for me. Uh, I would like to talk about some uh, generally phenomena in electromagnetism and, uh, attached to other uh, problems of uh, not at all linked physical systems. And um, with respect to this, would like uh, would ask first these three. Uh, Three questions. So, first of all, I would um, would like to justify why uh, it's very appropriate to talk about knotted uh, system. And uh, first, we'll start with some free space, probably known to some people, phenomena. Then we we'll move this into structures which uh, extend to. MHD, magnetohydrodynamics, and then we'll describe uh, the application to many physical phenomena uh, that we see in space. So first of all, basic Maxwell equation. Uh, I hope you can see. So uh, I will talk mainly from the classical point of view. This will be a sort of introduction to other talks probably, or other topics. Um, um, you can see on the, on the left, the differential, the standard differential equation of Maxwell. And um, the, my major topic is, will be eventually the coupling to ionized matter, which is given in, in the current and charge. And without them, we have the free, free space, which is, uh, uh, full of electromagnetic uh, radiation which propagates. I also want just for reference to relate it to, to other forms which people use and sometimes very important in order to obtain significant results. So it's the tensor form and the differential form which uh, ho hopefully is, uh, people are aware of the exterior product and Hodge operator. I will stay mainly with the left hand. So. Uh, everybody learned in uh, childhood that electromagnetic waves are propagating in space and the uh, pointing flux, pointing vector describes the uh, propagation of energy. And, uh, and then uh, this is the standard. And here I will um, just summarize in half a minute the basic story of of uh, solutions uh, of the plasma fluid together with electromagnetic with electromagnetic uh, waves. So when we couple Maxwell equation and fluid equation, which I will describe a little bit later in more details, uh, which are the conservation mass, energy, and momentum. And we linearize and expand in plane, plane waves, which is the standard procedure in plasma physics as a first stage. We assume the so-called uh, variable separation. This is crucial assumption in all the, most of the an analysis, vast majority of analysis in plasma physics, which is the ionized matter in the presence of electromagnetic um, waves is based on this. So this gives the basis, the linear basis on which the, the waves are uh, formed. And the solution between the frequency and the wave number describes the major eigenmodes, which is a big animal if you, if, if you use all the forces, all the, 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 the uh, equations uh, of uh, fluid. And we, we get the free space. So this is uh, what, what, what essentially I wanted just to give one example, which I did for many years uh, being from student and uh, later. Uh, and uh, the basic was we get some satellite data. This is wind satellite of radiation belt near, near, near the earth. This is stereo, two satellites which moved with the earth ahead and, uh, and uh, behind waves. And this is even new data just uh, from Solar Orbiter, another satellite which was just launched. And these waves are, first of all, explaining them, what they affect on particles, 
how did they inform and what they do, do they do and then the major uh, 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 aspect of behavior of um, um, bodies in the, in space or and uh, one of the most important is energization sometimes to very high energy of particles which we know uh, are coming in uh, to us in uh, with energy of uh, from MeV to GeV to 10 to the 20, which is not explained very well, electron volt. So this is the basic of uh, plasma physics, which everybody was done. And then just a few years ago, I encountered the, the, the question, what is the es essentially? The ma major assumption is this, uh, this variable separ separation mathematically. But uh, then the, the question is, um, I would like to describe first, uh, for the beginning, the remarkable uh, solution of Maxwell equations, where, where electrical and magnetic field and the pointing, uh, pointing uh, flux are behaving in a very unique way. And then what does it, what does it mean for the future? So the, the story starts in a, 1930 or 31, when Hof surprised the mathematical world with his uh, idea that um, if you if you find a function from three-dimensional uh, um, uh, sphere, which uh, I described uh, simply here, to the two to two three-dimensional to two-dimensional. This, this was one of the ways, then you can find some amazing structures, amazing uh, structures, which can be later uh, applied to other fields. So in complex domain, this is the way. I, don't, I, I will not go into the details. I will give uh, uh, telegraphically just some results. And uh, the, the, with this kind of transformation, the question is always, how do we see higher space, higher uh, dimensional space in our uh, human uh, world? And the answer is uh, typical, uh, typically a stereographic projection from the North Pole. So he, you can see immediate, uh, immediately that if you take any ray of light from the North Pole, or either from the two-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional, uh, three-dimensional uh, sphere or, or two-dimensional sphere to, to lower dimensionally uh, plane or manifold, you can, uh, there, there is a, a, a simple projection, which is part of the ge geometry. So bottom line is that topology and geometry play mutual, mutual role and they uh, complement each other. Now comes the, the biggest uh, surprise of that time from Hof, Hof map is that all the points from the S3, if you multiply each point by some uh, complex number of magnitude to one, meaning it's a circle, they map to the same point on, on S2. Or in, in reverse, each point of the S2 max back to the uh, H minus one to in S3. It means the two points on S2 map to, uh, through the stereographic uh, projection to linked circles in R3. So this is a beautiful structure that one point goes into circle, the other point goes to another circle. And what is special that they they are linked. This is called Hof link. And this has a major implication for the uh, e e evolution of uh, poss possibilities. So if I take not one point, but the whole latitude of points, I automatically make a, a lot of um, circles which are linked and they create a torus. And uh, uh, the, the structure is very uh, appealing because then from, if you take for in this example, three 
latitudes with different colors, you create a nested, nested tori with each other. That's what uh, some uh, very often is called hofion. And this is a subject that is uh, well known in the uh, circles of the top topology. Uh, I would like, I decided to show at least one example uh, how, would, how to create out of this uh, electromagnetic field. Because there are many beautiful ways with the, uh, the differential um, uh, forms. But uh, I think that this is uh, the simplest one, just for people who never saw it. Uh, the Bateman, uh, more than 100 years ago, if he assumed that in the free space, uh, we take the so-called Riemann-Zilberstein um, vector. So the source-less Maxwell uh, equation give the simple, simple results uh, described uh, on, on the bottom. As a result, if we take a form, some two scalar uh, complex function, which satisfy this uh, specific relation, automatically they will satisfy the equations which are fulfilled by this F. And therefore, we assume that uh, the electromagnetic Silverstein uh, uh, field can be described as cross product of these two entities. This is essentially, when I saw it first time, it was clear to me because we always do today in a magnetic field, we use the so-called Euler variables, which are this, but then now it has completely the much broader meaning. Because uh, first of all, we get these uh, fields which are in, in free space, which are of equal amplitude, they are perpendicular, and pointing vector, which describes the motion of energy, the flux of energy, is, is given by this. So in principle, it's clear. The, fine, the bottom line is the difficult part is to assume appropriate alpha, beta and, um, function. But once it is done, suddenly we create some uh, amazing structure that the, that the uh, electromagnetic force, electromagnetic fields can be described by some very unusual um, configuration when the, the fields are completely linked. And this is the basic story, which is so different when versus what I described before, that the variables are separated. Here they are not, they are uh, entangled and, uh, and, uh, and it's quite beautiful structure. Only the question is, that's beautiful, nice, but what, uh, how does it work? So in order to, uh, to just to summarize this part of my talk, if we took a complex um, uh, maps from three S3 to three uh, S2 with a, with a set of uh, pro procedures, we, we create, we can create electromagnetic fields, which are tangent to the projected of fibers. And this is, uh, in many aspects, is beautiful structure because suddenly in, in the free space, we can, we can um, construct uh, features which can propagate in a very unique way. And as we change the, the structure a little bit, we can preserve there some information and this pro pro propagates freely in space. There's uh, some important theorem, which is superposition of solution is also a solution. And this means that uh, two holomorphic uh, function give the same pointing vector, which is called, which is used as a ro uh, called the Robinson congruence. Here is example of, uh, of uh, construction in the electromagnetic uh, fields, pointed flux, and they propagate. How they propagate? First of all, uh, there's some generalization. It was done already a few years ago. And uh, if we change to 
the, the functions to something um, with, um, with two indices, M and N, we can create set of beautiful, instead of circles, beautiful uh, knots. This is uh, the famous trefoil. These are the others, which I will describe them in different contexts a little bit later. And they fill the three-dimensional space. And here is a, a simulation of this function, which I did not describe them, as, uh, if you assume, but if you do it correctly, and uh, they propagate the topology and the pointed ve vectors are preserved. So summary, we can create tangent uh, fields uh, due to Euler potential compatible with fiber. And uh, what is important, we can encode the information in the torus nodes according to our desire. They propagate and the application of this are quite numerous. I myself don't know uh, too much uh, what, what is done these days about them, but in principle, this is something that can be used for also for quantum computing in order to preserve the information and uh, other, uh, other stories which are related to this. The only problem is how to create this kind of beams. And this is an upcoming task. And clearly, next question, which I should immediately add, what happens if, if, if we have plasma? And in order to do it, I have to say several things about plasma fluid. So ideal magne magne magnetohydrodynamics is perfectly conducting fluid, fluid with interacting with magnetic field. If you couple two electron and uh, proton fields together, we get the, uh, the so-called ion fluid or the plasma fluid, which, uh, which uh, uh, momentum is uh, this, uh, modified by pressure. The famous J cross B, which, uh, which can be split into two terms, the pressure and tension. And surely, if you want, you, you, you can go to viscosity, gravity, and whatever. The electron fluid itself will, will leave it. But generally, we ignore the in, uh, electron inertia, whole term uh, pr uh, electron pressure, and we are left with Ohm's law in, the, in this context. So the bottom line, and I will skip all the, the, the in, in approximation which, which leads to the final interaction between Maxwell due to Ohm's law, uh, plasma fluid, and several additional approximation. And the ideal MHD are essentially conservation of mass, of momentum, of energy, which I here I will describe it as a adiabatic process. And surely you can add whatever you we, we think uh, necessary. And the field which couples to, to this is only given by, by, this, uh, by this equation. Uh, one, only one point, which is the basic in uh, every class that is given on, on this uh, topic, is that the magnetic flux, if you, if you follow the simple rules of uh, integration is um, um, along the co-moving surface as it moves uh, is conserved in perfectly conducting flu fluid. So there is no intersection of field, of field lines. Uh, and uh, this is the basic, basic story of, uh, in, of the ideal uh, MHD. Well, not ideal MHD is uh, similar, but there are more, more terms. And there is a thermal pressure, magnetic tension, magnetic pressure, viscous terms, and whatever other things, gravity and uh, other things, and, uh, and other terms. The magnetic field itself now has not only convective terms, but also due to the resistivity has some uh, diffusion term. And this is very basic, very important. This is the dynamo, which created our magnetic field at the earth, among other things, and let us live in peace from uh, galactic cosmic rays. And the diffusion, which decays the magnetic field. That's what happened on, Venus, on Mars, which used to have a strong magnetic field, 
and today we, we see only leftover. The, surely the energy uh, equation is uh, depending on your choice, uh, either adiabatic or whatever, sometimes a very long, long equation, but there's a, the, that's the whole art of, of analysis and simulations of this phenomenon. And uh, one, one uh, view graph for the basic information about this uh, aspect of interaction between plasma and a magnetic field, that any perturbation along the homogeneous field, and even more than that, moves with the so-called Alphen speed. Uh, so this is the speed of transport, uh, transport of information, which is essentially similar to or either to speed of light in a regular sound and whatever, whatever information is, is transport. So magnetic, uh, magnetized plasma transport the information with the speed of alpha. And the ratio between alpha and speed of uh, any beams or any entity is a crucial part of the analysis. Reconnection can, uh, can change the topology of the magnetic field. And here I listed very important uh, quantities is the magnetic helicity, which is approximately invariant. Similarly to fluid helicity, the kinetic helicity in fluids, which is due to velocity and uh, vorticity in liquid. And there's also very important uh, notion of cross helicity between uh, velocity and magnetic field. So these three, three helicities are essentially the magnetic helicity, cross helicity in plasma are of major importance um, in, in the analysis. I have, surely I should have added that both Einstein condensate and many other applications, like a gross pitayevsky equation, are also on the same footing that uh, they describe it. And uh, that's why I, uh, the statement is that whatever happens in fluids happens also in other superfluids, etc. Okay, resistive simulation, which I took uh, from a re relatively recent, uh, recent. If you take um, um, these three rings, which are inter intertwined, the after simulation from these parameters which the authors choose, they get something which looks like Hof fiber topology. That was quite uh, amazing. And then if they took the trefoil, they also got uh, Hof like. So the, what, whatever I, I said before, that about the empty uh, free space, it uh, can apply easily to plasma, which already makes the framework of analysis of uh, ability to, to apply to many physical phenomena quite interesting. It doesn't mean that every time it must be going into the Hof, but it, uh, it means that uh, structures which are not homogeneous, which are not laminar are quite uh, popular and can be obtained. So, so summary in, the, in this, uh, this part, that many uh, configuration relax into some Hof, uh, Hof uh, states, and they have, uh, what is important, that they have, are very localized in magnetic energy, and uh, they live, survive, over times which are uh, much longer than the major uh, time of the e evolution of, of, of configuration in general configuration in plasma physics. So then there comes the, the question, can this structure be observed? And this is major story, which uh, a lot of uh, research started. I myself was not aware of this, that it's already tens of years, people are doing something like that, but always the community, we, we know it in uh, science, don't talk to each other that much. So are the MHD nodes observing natural phenomena? Okay, I, here I want to, to go to my uh, uh, ad hoc uh, statements that this kind of phenomena probably are known, are uh, seen quite a lot in, um, 
in our uh, units. So for instance, young star, this is the uh, eject material, which is called uh, this uh, hero, uh, hero objects. They are huge. They are observed. This is cyclotron uh, radiation. That's why, so it means that uh, it's uh, due to magnetic field uh, structure. And the si size is 1000 AU. AU is um, distance to, to the sun from us, 150 million kilometers. On the other hand, in the curves and fold in auroral lines, or auroral uh, system, they, we see some folds, something with of the order of 10 kilometers. And in the lab experiments, I give that just three examples, beautiful uh, experiment in the last 10 years. Uh, we they, they observe something of, of size of a uh, fraction of centimeter, maybe millimeters. So uh, then it brings me to three years ago when the, in the early morning, uh, we launched uh, the satellite, which uh, later was re renamed Parker Solar Probe. And here are the, the beautiful pictures. I hope you can see them um, as it was launched. Uh, one more. And then the, the trajectory. So we launched it from, from the Earth. And uh, when it encountered first time intentional Venus, it changed its orbit a little bit, such that it started to go um, in the elliptical orbit uh, around the sun. The Ven Venus was moving all the time, and every so and so, we encounter Venus again, and then change the, the trajectory, such that the perihelion, the closest uh, part of the, is moving slowly and slowly closer to the sun, which allows us to test the instrument, see how they work, and generally they work perfect. So here, here are the, here is the, again, the same picture, and here, I show the, the distance from, from the sun. Every time the perihelion is changing, peri uh, perihelion is changing, it means that an uh, encounter Venus. And then eventually it will go to about eight, nine, nine so solar radii. To remind you, we are now in the distance of 220 solar radii. It's hot there a little bit. Instruments are working quite perfect. A year ago, during the pandemic even, NASA and ESA and NASA launched the Solar Orbiter, which will not go that, way, that, that close to the sun, but will be, on the other hand, in the inclination from the ecliptic plane. Ecliptic plane is the plane of the planets. And this mutual in the measurements will be very beneficial. Magnet, so what, what, what do we want to know with this uh, satellite? There are many things. One is the uh, solar corona. How does it heat up to millions of degrees from the photosphere, which is only at 6,000 uh, degrees Kelvin? That's the light that we observe coming directly from the sun. So this is a major story from few thousand to few million degrees uh, heat. Uh, we want also to know acceleration and uh, the structure of the magnetic field, acceleration of solar and uh, many other uh, energetic particles. Altogether, that also the, the big question of turbulence in fluid. All these tasks where we, we try to, to, uh, to an analyze. And here is uh, just for audience which have never seen it. Uh, uh, coronal mass ejection is a micro, micro supernova, which is observed from the sun quite uh, infrequently, but every, sometimes every few days. Of the, and uh, uh, this is the huge amount of matter. Here it is, about 10 to the 15 grams which move with up to 3000 kilometers per second and fills the whole heliosphere. And then my question with the previous, previous topics is how is the, how is the uh, structure of the, of the field? 
is it over, over tens of years, people drew cartoons when the field was described by wiggling of magnetic field. So instead of regular magnetic field, it's just wiggle. It moves. Uh, all, if you remember some uh, in, in, uh, quantum electrodynamics, I really always remember some Zitterbewegung of uh, oscillation of, of particles. And uh, this is the most, is it the most general configuration? I think that the answer is no. There are, there are much more interesting uh, configuration. So in order to uh, address it, I look uh, at the data, which were fantastically, fantastic resolution with, uh, and with, with depiction of uh, solar uh, braids. You, I hope you can see that there are uh, structure, internal structure, and they are intertwined. It's like similar to braids, they change the uh, shape and go there, there's some specific direction. If, if your imagination is not sufficient to see the braids, I found also some non-solar non -solar braids, and I hope that this is sort of a nice analogy to, to the solar braids. I um, uh, have to say that already 20 plus years ago, there was some simulation which uh, describes some structure of magnetic field, which really does not look like a distorted uh, line of field uh, uh, that can just wiggle. This is for sure more complicated and cannot be disentangled into line unless you cut it. That's it. So the question is, do they originate from the braids, for instance? This is my thesis, but uh, let, let's see where, where can we follow this. And here is the biggest, the first time from our solar probe, uh, one of the first and I, until today, the most interesting discovery that the magnetic field, the main magnetic field called the Carter field, which penetrates from the sun to the earth uh, and over the whole heliosphere, has usually direction approximately radial with a, with a twist, uh, with a, some change. It's a, it's a, that's why it's called a Parker, Parker field, uh, because he described it as hose which you uh, flow water and uh, as you rotate. So sun rotates and the field is uh, almost, almost uh, uh, radial, but it changes when it reaches the earth, it has already uh, 40 degrees, but it's static, almost static with some small perturbation. On the other hand, as we approach the sun much closer than we are uh, here, we observe huge tendency and repeated, uh, uh, repeated deviation of, the, of, of this field, a reversal of the radial field. And it brought now tens of papers, uh, discussion, and the basic line was find some alphenic propagation from the sun or local excitation of fields, which will uh, rotate the field naturally over many, uh, many minutes. Uh, and, and, uh, and they are quite uh, interesting topics, but all of them are based essentially on the standard uh, story of plasma physics with waves and propagation and into medium which is changing. So it's the non-linearity, non-homogeneous propagation of electromagnetic waves as we know them uh, over many, many de decades. Uh, I would like to go into some other aspect and claim that there's a possibility that they are co connected to magnetic knots. So first of all, uh, let me go and describe really my manifesto, uh, which, uh, 
which is self uh, very clear, but uh, I, I just took definition. So magnetic field is fictitious, the diagram of lines in R3. MHG is approximated description without non-self uh, non intersecting magnetic field. In plasma physics, it's called frozen in condition. That's a very interesting how uh, historical Alfen uh, gave this name. Not on the other hand, if I take it from uh, any text uh, about uh, not theory, mathematical, not theory, it's a closed loop in 3D transform in, the, in R3 over uh, the uh, push, push smoothly in viscous field without self intersection. And they call it ambient isotopy. I, when I first uh, saw it, it took me three weeks to understand that also sort of frozen in is ambient isotopy. And, uh, quite interesting how people don't talk to each other and two fields are not uh, are self independent, but they talk about uh, similar things. And then comes the most important aspect that MHD field evolves as a topological transformation of a knot or a link. Uh, MHG dynamics follow equivalent knot configuration, preserving a set of knot invariants. So this goes into detail, but essentially the question is why these uh, fields, this structure will be uh, stable. And now I will have to run a little bit. Uh, clearly this, uh, uh, this structure can be linked, knotted or twisted. Uh, example from life, trefoil, if you go to Japan, you, the delicatessen is uh, slimy, I ill. And if you rock, uh, uh, rock climbing, for sure you, you heard about the figure eight. And this is the stretching, folding, twisted, uh, etc. It's based on one major uh, theorem 100 years ago of Reidemeister, and that says that every uh, in, invariant of the of the, in every knot, it's a topological equivalent if we perform one of the, of the three movement. Of the, and here I, here I show them, it's uh, visually is more, more clear than uh, with, with words. So you can have trillions of this uh, small localized uh, movement. And if you move, uh, if you uh, perform them from the point of view of topology, it's the same knot which is very important and very helpful. And then it comes, how do we analyze the, um, uh, whatever we, we need uh, in the algebra? Uh, so uh, you see there's a spin up and spin down. Uh, when, I, when I saw it first time, I was thinking, and then we have to give some meaning to this. And uh, I will go a little bit faster that uh, th these uh, items have to be um, analyze with this uh, procedure. And uh, also, if they are spin down, it reminds immediately the easing model, which should, could be used also to, to obtain some information about the, any, any structure. And uh, I, I, we, can, we can talk some other, later uh, about the, the, the major detail. Hofflink gives me the opportunity to, sh to show the linking number is essentially helicity, and the linking number is invariant under the uh, right master uh, moves. And then the one, the last thing of uh, importance of, is that the nodes, I can add nodes in some way and create a more complicated node, combined node. But there are some prime nodes which are not a node sum of non trivial nodes, meaning that there will be some nodes. Which are, which are the basic uh, forms that they are not, uh, not combined by uh, so-called reconnection of, of other nodes. And this, uh, in principle, this is like uh, you describe the nodes by integer and the nodes some by product. And automatically, you will have some prime number in the, in the, in the, in the three, uh, simple uh, case of integers. But this prime number, they are like prime nodes. And therefore, this was uh, the inclination to, uh, to claim that this is uh, essentially a Mendeleev table, and, um, uh, which, uh, which we can create it. 
surely it's not nothing new. Lord Kelvin suggested before knowing about anything about internal structure of atoms that this is the the basic uh, story of the um, of the uh, structure of the of the atoms that, uh, that they are the different by, by knots. I, we can talk uh, a lot uh, about this analysis. Here are some experimental. Here is a trefoil. Here is a 6-2 knot of uh, DNA, super coiled, some kind. Uh, there is uh, another molecular pentafoil, which is also a torus knot. And then uh, what is interesting, not all the knot are, even this knot, which we can cut with the helicity is zero, but they, definitely they are not, not the same. So that's why there's a need to, to create to create a, a formal a way to describe the, the uh, knot in some mathematical algebraic way. So from topology to algebra, essentially I will go now uh, sort of clearly, but a little bit faster, uh, topology to algebra, we create that every crossing, it's uh, either uh, has some value. And uh, this is the, the crossing will be in the Reidemeister um, structure. And this is the algebraic the, the formulation. So you see the three Reidemeister are described by, by three relations. And then if we describe something like uh, some form, simply form and do it for any, any note that we know, we create the famous Alexander polynomial about also about 100 years ago. It took 60 years more to create more, more important polynomial because these polynomials are fantastic uh, invariants of each one of the nodes, but they are, they are not describing more complicated nodes to distinguish them in, by the polynomial. Very often, sometimes it happens that the same polynomial describe two nodes. So there was a major effort and only uh, 30 years ago, um, here, I, I, I will uh, just give example that in same like in easing model, we have the Hamiltonian and the canonical uh, partition function. Uh, then uh, the same way we can do it with the nodes by assuming some variables, assuming some um, um, canonical function and this and um, demanding that they will be uh, Invariant under the under the uh, right Meister move, and therefore we create the famous uh, thirty years ago Jones polynomials, which are much better, and uh, after that other polynomials. Bottom line is that there are invariants of this structure, and this structure can can uh, should have some strength of survival. Sure, they will be changed if if you take it narrow, too unstable. That's what we saw in the simulation that they are changing to Hof. But there is still, uh, even Hof itself is very unusual and beautiful structure that can be presented and maybe obtained. I will skip the braids uh, theory of, uh, with the theory of braids, I can, I can uh, make, uh, make the braid word and uh, I look at uh, as a Totrapi language, if you know the famous uh, uh, TV series. So from topology to algebra, algebra we can do, uh, we can discuss according to the uh, um, coupling in the, as we visualize the, the, the nodes, the, the, the braids. And then important Alexander theorem, uh, also 90 years ago, that if every braid, every braid, if we connect it, uh, the lines, this is a fictitious, you can get, uh, you can get a, a knot. This is important for plasma physics because this connection is essentially reconnection. If you have magnetic field going one way up and there's some uh, magnetic field going down, they can reconnect this famous uh, process, and this uh, and this gives us the the form of the of the different forms uh, that 
if you have uh, braids, you can have knots. You, you, you can create knots. Now remember, I show you the braids in the solar corona and possibility of creating the nodes, which will, my, according to my thesis, will be emitted from the sun and propagate relatively stably into the solar wind. And then maybe as a reversal of magnetic field. So uh, Markov uh, gave a fantastic story uh, how the, uh, what kind of braids can be uh, preserved, uh, mo motion of braids with modification, which uh, I will leave it as a, uh, an, uh, just as a picture. And this uh, gives a solar, possible solar oscillations, which are stable. And then my conjecture will be that the braid group and Markov moves are the mechanism which keep partly the solar corona heating. And uh, if they are destroyed, this can be also source for the coronal mass, mass ejection. About uh, braids to nodes, this is simulation which was done, uh, tens, hundreds of simulations were done when you have magnetic field in opposite directions and it creates a, a, this um, bubble, a magnetic island. A, and then it, it uh, dissolves. However, if you, my theory is that if you have uh, braids, they will reconnect in three dimensions, not in two dimensions like here, and they are much more stable. These simulations were not done yet at all, and I hope that uh, in the future they, they, they can be done. So if I have uh, some uh, which gets out of the sun, I can extend it due to the different speed of the different parts of the torus. And uh, I can get many more of, the, of them. Each one of them can be spread. On top of it, I can make two, two knot re reconnection and then have much elongated torus, uh, much elongated knot. Or my best example is that I, I take several of them and they reconnect and make as observed in the, in the data that the, the structure is very much elongated. And then its satellite comes from different directions, can observe sometimes very long, sometimes short, the modification of the magnetic field. And probably there is something in this which is much more than the standard wave deformation of the electromagnetic structure. So my general co co conjecture, I try to be on time. The photospheric magnetic field emerges in the form of distorted unknot or prime nodes. The, all the um, examples that I showed, maybe they can be related to herbic harrow objects ejected by protostar, auroral curves, clumpy jets in lab, and the important switchback in inner heliosphere, they may indicate that there are some processes controlled by nodes and not some of magnetic prime nodes. Topological structure are ubiquitous in nature. And I hope that I gave some example that mathematical man manipulation of uh, nodes and links play very important role in the evolution of physical entities. Thanks. Thank you very much. Now there is time for questions. Let me allow, I will ask first question by myself. You said at the beginning, you compare various mathematical tools to, to, to use electromagnetic. So can you set a heavy side and vector formulation versus tensor formulation? Are they identical or not? Vector. <laughs> Versus I'm sorry that my audio, uh, you asked me about heavy side. Heavy side vec formulated vector forms of Maxwell equations. Yeah. Maxwell equations in vector form are by the heavy side. Sorry that I. 
cannot cannot hear my audio is uh, i hope you, you can he hear me better I than i hear you very well yeah okay so uh, cannot... so the, but let, and then next question then recently uh, maxwell equations were formed in quaternion form yes one uh, of your one of your slides was showing equations that reminds me big quaternion formulation. At the beginning, I mean? Yeah, I mean, some in the middle. The equations look like big quaternion. You mean? Uh, no. About, you are talking about Maxwell equation? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, Maxwell equation, of course. Before, before. Most of the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So no. what do you think about quaternion formulation of Maxwell? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I, I, I put it tensor form differential form, but the quaternion. Uh, sure, it it can be. But there's also uh, what is the one uh, Penrose? What he created the algebra. Uh, and there, there's also. Uh, uh, application, not a spinor and twistor. There's a twistor, uh, twistor for, for formulation. And I intentionally did not did not touch uh, anything uh, formal because uh, it's it's beautiful. Uh, I don't uh, for my, my purpose. It's it's very helpful. But you are right that these forms and the quaternion uh, probably can be very much uh, well used for. Uh, other, 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 better, faster results and maybe even something new. Um, so I, I, I don't have opinion. I don't know too much about uh, the, the other forms. Um, in, in standard plasma physics, we, we still use the old-fashioned differential, differential. And surely, if you want um, um, to go into the Minkowski space, it's a, it's better to, to use the, the tensor form or even the, this one. So I I'm open minded to any kind of uh, description. Bottom line for me is, will it help to explain uh, data? And here that, that's why I uh, I emphasize the the fact that with all the uh, knots. Uh, I want to, for instance, to go into the switchback uh, phen phenomena. And um, it's difficult to convince other people about it, but uh, that it's very, the, I hope that it's, uh, it's well known that uh, it, it, is, it applies, this uh, formalism applies to may, many other physical phenomena. We know that uh, the general relativity is also using something uh, very similar. Are there any questions? I don't see. It. Yes, I have one question. Actually, it's a little bit a comment towards this uh, presentation. So uh, there is a phenomena of vortices in superconductors in low temperature and in high temperature superconductors. So uh, in such case, the, 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 those vortices can be, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, can also have a structure of knots, very complicated knots with topological structure. Actually, I, I already attached the file about review of modern physics. This was Blatter article on vortices in high temperature superconductors. So, uh, so, so, so both in such vortices, uh, both uh, uh, electric and magnetic fields can be entangled somehow, and, uh, but those vortices are quite quite unstable. So I wonder if if the system is a bit of similarity towards system described by Professor Roth. That that's one thing. Second thing, there is also phenomena of vortices uh, in uh, superfluids, like in superfluid helium. And then they are they are described by Gross-Pitayevsky equation. And also, they can have very complicated structure. Nevertheless, the vortices in the super in superfluids, there is no associated electric and magnetic field. While for vortices in superconductor, 
you have such uh, uh, both fields. So, so I wonder. So, so have you have you seen uh, Professor Roth? Have you seen any analogy between vortices in superconductors with with the the the, the system of of a knotted electromagnetic field described by you? I know one thing that the Bose-Einstein condensate is very much uh, similar to to this. That's uh, that's my only uh, my, my my closest uh, example to to go into the uh, so, uh, so 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 uh, the, the the field of uh, with with quantum uh, aspects. So this is the gross pitayevsky equation uh, was done. Um, I I assume that every every topic which uh, allows some a uh, knotted structure will be uh, it will be appropriate to to deal with the with this approach with the stability of this stability of the structure is probably the most important aspect because you you just not create it but you want to sustain it and uh, what conditions you you want it so um, it's clear that the structures which are uh, very interesting topology should be included in analysis. Question is, from my point of view, if this is sustained over significant times that uh, can be observed also in the experiments. But I, I think so. I believe vortices in, uh, in vortices in superconductors you can pin. So they can have complicated topologies, while uh, vortices in uh, superfluids or in Bose-Einstein condensate, I think they're uh, very, very unstable objects that have very rich dynamics. So, so you can they, they, they don't sustain sufficient long time to observe them. Anyway, I already attached one of the files uh, describing vortices in superconductors. So maybe you can have later for ref reference. Thank you, Professor Sada, please. Hello. Yeah, thank you. I would like to remind on the talk of this morning, which I had. And uh, I have also this described this Hopf vibration, a Hopf, Hopf map. You, you make the map of S3 to S2 times S1. So, and uh, your fibers are the S1. And uh, if the vacuum is, is a fixed point on S2, then uh, this, you have to have the covering, full covering of S2. And then you get, get this uh, binding number of, of, uh, of lines and I interpret such a binding number with, uh, with, with photon number. And uh, I, I would like to add, you, you don't cross this, these lines. What happens if you cross these lines is that you have two imaginary parts of quaternions and the product of two imaginary parts gives a real part also. So and in, in my model, this corresponds to mass creation, to a, to a lump of mass. And you know that with two photons, you can produce uh, particle antiparticle. So it's very close to you, but I, a dual description, but it's a, a, a dual, what I'm using is dual description. So I exchange E and B compared to your description. So you may think to use a dual description. So I think photons are in the dual description. Thanks. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm sorry that I missed your talk uh, at my night. Uh, I can send you a, a paper yeah. on that. Yeah, I I would like it just to promote the idea that uh, in many circles in the physics, in the, people are reluctant to go beyond the standard. Uh, wave information and uh, which is already quite complicated and uh, the question the biggest question is the data can justify us to to try to convince others that um, structures which are uh, not in not yeah. in meanings uh, and uh, are existing in the, in the nature. For me, 
A is great example of some kind of uh, knotted physical structure. We have more questions. Professor Kucha, Kucha please. Uh, hello, uh, it, it was a very nice talk. Uh, I, I would like to ask about uh, braids and applications to uh, uh, to quantum computing. I mean, uh, topological quantum computing. Have you considered it? I must say no. Okay, because uh, yeah, it, it looks no, like uh, topological uh, quantum uh, computing, uh, exactly <laughs> what you presented. I was thinking. Yes, I was thinking about the, other, the very fact that uh, waves, uh, the, the structure are propagated first in free space and then in plasma, and then uh, we sort of observe, it gives some indication that, that it's, it's possible. And quantum computing, uh, that's uh, for sure something. But you know, until a few years ago, I was working all the time, just uh, writing proposals and uh, bringing students surviving. And now I can I go there. I would like to learn something more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I had, when I'm listening, I have very crazy idea that maybe you can use sun as a quantum computer using this uh, plasma uh, lines as uh, as these topological uh, things to, to compute something. Yeah. But it's, yeah, yeah but it's yeah. science fiction. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the first thing, Professor information Zuber. in the note or in the link. Uh, 